Next on POV. Queer and trans youth of color transform the Christopher Street Pier into their own sanctuary. In the face of homelessness and homophobia, three friends find joy and hope through bonds of chosen family. An intimate portrait of a raw side of New York City that many choose to ignore. Pier Kids on POV. Stay tuned following this program to hear from the director and to find out how you can share your point of view. Major funding for POV has been provided by the Open Society Foundations, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Wincote Foundation, the Reva and David Logan Foundation, the Perspective Fund, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Bertha Foundation. Additional support provided by and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a new dad. You got a cigarette? Come on, Alice. I gave him all the way. Hey, y'all can feel like this. Take a break. Come smoke with us. And Crystal, how old are you? I'm 23 years old. I'll be 24 September 28. Very good. Happy birthday if I don't see you. All right. Thank you. And how long have you been coming to the pier? Uh, oh, I've been coming to the pier. I moved out here on July 1st. And I've been here for about a month, going on two months now. A month, going on two months. Yeah. And you came here from? Philadelphia by way of Missouri, by way of California. I was raised in California. A lot of people told me when I first came came out, like, don't make this your life. Not that I said I made it my life, but don't put so much time into it because it's going to your life up. It's, what's that? What about it f***s your life up? Because oh. you get caught up. Yeah. Caught like up I in said, what? This whole village is another world inside a world. Yeah. Because I tell you no lie, this is its own 
This is the HUD. For me, this is the, not the HUD. This is not a HUD, not because this but, is like a, a virtual reality. You, you yeah. never know this is here until you actually come here and like live it yourself. Yeah. This everything in here is amazing. It's like a story. Like you read it, and you're like this is. This, I, can't, I can't believe this. This is a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. People be boys hustling. Never thought about it. At what point were you homeless? Um, in June of 2009, I became put out of my house. Um, I was reunited with my biological mother, and I came out to her for the first time during I, you know, being reunited with her, and she put me out immediately. Um, the only reason I came to New York um, off the path train is because I heard about this program, Alley for Me Center, but like I became caught up in the survival of Christopher Street, meaning that I only stay down here. I really made no profession. This is where we socialize, we mix and mangle, we meet new people, we discover new things, we explore ourselves as, as well as relationships, you know, those that last and those that only last for an hour. And I it, it mean, it's really the humor and also like the your unifying effects of the peer versus what Christopher Street itself is. It's more of, you know, this is what I need, you know, we go in, sometimes you have to go in there and you have to steal some uh, some food from CVS, you understand? Right. Because at the end of the day, our bodies need nourishment. But this, the pier, this is where the beauty, where the ugly, the drama, this is where everything takes place. This is our home. Like, people say, how you can call this your home? Because everything that happens here, that people who don't have a roof to call a home, everything that happens in a, you know, a home, a house, a family, it happens here as well, you know? You have your most beautiful, it's memories here. Just the, the scenery itself is beautiful. So therefore, you have the beautiful moments, you have the bad moments, you know? You have the moments where you make up with that girlfriend that, you know, y'all knew y'all was wrong, so y'all have the ability to sit here and say, I'm sorry, and this is what this means to me, and I can trust you, you know what I mean? Like, this is really, a family in itself because although many people come here on different levels in life we all can convert to the same place that some of us used to be and based and in that theory you know where we used to be all serve some type of common you know struggle no, no, no. Walked up. He came and gave me a hug. this is my gay father oh, Marvin Labation Marvin La the Labations yeah, yeah. The Labations. <laughs> so you're Crystal's gay father. Yes, I'm Crystal's gay father. How did you meet? How did you meet Crystal? Well, Crystal came to us, and she wanted to be a libation, and she asked me to do being a libation. So now I got her training, and I want her to be the woman she's supposed to be in life. How many children do you have? Well, I have many kids, but there's only two that I really nurture. And who are, who are you? Baby libation. Crystal. What's your name? Crystal. Crystal now, I am Crystal Lavesia. <laughs> not, uh, not the Crystal Lavesia, but I'm Crystal Lavesia nonetheless. Who is the Crystal Lavesia? Crystal. Uh, well, you can look her up on YouTube, of course. Well, I mean, or you can look her up on the first uh, documentary that was known in the LGBT world back in 1967, was it? When she stormed off that all-white pageant stage. And, and she, she said, take a picture of me and take a picture of Pop. And, and tell me which one dollar. sells more. Yes. And then she I'm not saying she's not pretty, but she wasn't better than me tonight. Yes. Say, each and every one of y'all make a name for yourself. It's not where you at. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Right. And the years. This peer been gay, and they always been in part of everybody's life. It's been times that I have laid down here and hung out and wouldn't go home just because I want to be among the girls. So, Tommy, to tell you anything, talk about this is not the place for you. It ain't like he ain't never been down here. A second might as well be taken. <laughs> Are you throwing up these signs? I don't know, what are we doing? Where are you at right now? I'm here 40. Um, we're about to be down in the financial district. 
What's in the financial district? Where are you headed to? Um, I work there, but we're going the opposite way right oh, now. That's brilliant. We going? That's exactly All right, listen, listen, listen. Wait, 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 wait. I got one question. I got one yes, question. Yes, sir. Do you notice black homosexuals or transsexuals down here? Do I notice them? What does that mean? Do you notice them here? What does that black mean? Black homosexuals, transsexuals. Do, do you I see notice them? black? Yeah, have you been down here on the pier and have you seen these types of people walking around? Have you okay. noticed these people walking do around? Do I notice, first of all, black doesn't belong in the same category as homosexuals and that's a, I think that that's a color of skin and that's something you see every day no matter if you're in right here or if you're in right. Alabama. No matter what you see, that's not, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges with that question. Um, first of all, I think Obama's comments today, did anyone? Yes. About you guys heard him? Talk about it. What, what was it? I think that say? they were ridiculous. I think that if a <laughs> what white... did he say? First off, what did Obama say today? I read a CNN article, and they were talking about his comments on it. Trayvon Martin. He, he, right? Yeah, Martin, he could, Martin he could have been he that been. guy. He could have been Trayvon Martin 30 years ago, and he said he could have been followed around in a grocery store or what? He, whatever. He's, yeah. Uh, a, department clothing store, store. Yeah, and yeah, he said yeah. black women grip their purses and or no white, no, women. white women white women grip their purses. Grip purses yes i honestly think this is, i mean i have Dude, say some of my said. best friends are black i honestly think that the same color of his skin that he is saying got him followed around in department stores and got women to clutch their bags in elevators i think that same color of his skin got him elected president <laughs> It's not like we come down here or people come down here to look for gates. It's like people come up to, to, to the young youth, and you know what I'm saying? They offer them money, and you know, if they ain't got no money in their pocket, of course they're gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, they be like, what's up? You wanna hang out or nothing? Like, it, the, we get approached more than anything, and it's, it's like we suffer the consequences because we get approached. Money talk, bullshit walks. It's just, it's just like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? People don't, a lot of people down here don't have a lot of homes to go to, so for them to make a coin or something like that, the police make it seem like they're going to stop prostitution. Prostitution can't be stopped. Go ahead. Today I don't feel like doing anything. What were the choices you had to deal with your situation tonight? What were the things that were available to you as options? Either to go to the beat, march down to the beat, where I used to go to on 128th, like 125th Street, I'll say, on Park Avenue. I'll just say that. And in Harlem, or just, um, try to get as much connection on my laptop as possible. Luckily, I have my laptop in if they want to do incoming or outgoing calls. And pretty much it got to the point where because most of the time when they want to girls, they want girls, girls. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that can charge those big rates or whatever. Or most people who look for tea girls, that's one of the requests, at least to have Oriola. And I don't have those yet. So it's either that, get someone who's willing to deal with the cross dresser which that's what I would file under it right now, or go back to use my voice sites, and that's what I've been having to do. And I had a hit tonight, so instead of going to the beat, I'm going to an uh, in-house date or whatever. Starting with cycle six. So you just like me have a nine to five, so this is just overtime. I got you. What's the nine to five about? Nine to five is Marshalls. That pays the rent. You know, put food on the table. It's just overtime for shopping and trips. How's business? Business is good. 
five hundred and two hours. Hold on, yeah, one second. Hours, money. 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 get home, you want to get there around like one-ish or two-ish. They offer sometimes 20, which I laugh at. But and then it can range all the way anywhere between 20 to 80 dollars. Me, the lowest I'll ever go down is 50. If the boy's cute, maybe 40. If it's an easy date and or it's a slow night, then maybe 40 just so I can have a substantial amount to make it through the next day. So tonight is the trans troll? Yeah, um, it's a mixture because a block away is a girl's troll. And if you're enough or if you're passive or enough, you can go on both strokes. So sometimes I go on both strokes. Like I said, today should be a rather quick night because all I'm trying to do is get enough to do what I need to do to make it for today's. So, and I'm a pretty good budgeter, so. As long as I can buy some more sandwich meat and, mm -hmm. and get to church tomorrow, right. I'm all right. So that could be just one day. drug dealers that cause problems. It's not the sex workers that cause problems out here. It's the crisis that's being, you know, generated to this one particular area. It's the... What's the crisis? It's the homeless population. We as homeless youth come to this area because this is what we know as safe zone.
friends, they were only playing. They were taking them for no reason. They wasn't really fighting. They were playing. And the thing is, it was more than two people playing. Exactly. Everybody was play fighting. They were playing. So whoever called the cops, they got it wrong. They wasn't for real. They were playing with each other. They know each other. They're friends. How many cops do you think were just out there to arrest two people without like questioning them? 25 to 40. And what happened? My two friends was play fighting, and then, um, well, it was me and my friends, and we were all play fighting, but, and then the cops came, but I ran, and then my friends got caught play fighting, and then he got locked up. But I don't, like, I believe there's something more to it. I believe that it's because we're homosexual, and, like, because they just don't like it. They told us to wait out here for 10, 20 minutes until... We just gonna be free in my booth, because we be getting there together. I really don't care. It's just sad. It's just sad. Because I feel by the summer, I'm definitely going to be in housing. I can feel that. I come over to help out. This is Aaron's grandmother's house. And I just come over to help out as needed and go about my business. Um, took me a while to get the OK to be able to be in this space, but now that it is okay, I don't burn my bridges. I do what I'm asked to do. And it's beneficial, because I get to chill with my best friend, and I get to learn about his family. And we just spend time together. There was one time where Aaron snuck me in, and we got caught, and, um, his grandmother, she said, this ain't no drive for streets. <laughs> and it was very amusing, it was very funny to me, but at the time I had to realize that what I was doing was wrong. I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of what I do for survival. And today my store of choice was Pathmark. And I went to Pathmark and I confiscated, AKA boosted, AKA stole, three packs of chuck of beef, short bone ribs, one 
container of extra vir virgin olive oil. It's healthy. Body scrub. Four packs, Uncle Bean's Spanish rice. You just cut them. There's four of them there. Big and good all week. Preparation H. So the first time I actually started this was probably when I moved to New York and I seen that it was really common. And so with the Thailand, I will say Thailand of, you know, being very nonchalant and environment oriented, meaning I can adapt to an environment very quickly and be comfortable in it. You know, I learned how to work my way around the stores and confiscate items here and there. How does one do that? Um, well, what I do is I go in and I grab me a shopping cart and I shop legitimately. And as I shop, I have my book bag and while shopping, I will pull over an aisle with the least amount of uh, surveillance and I just load up and I'll walk to the register and I'll stand in line and I have a gift card that I probably used two weeks ago. And I'll put the items on the register, have them scan it, boom, boom, boom. And then when they swipe the card, I give, oh, sorry, I forgot to activate my card. I'll be right back. And I don't go back. I don't feel like it's wrong. I don't feel like it's right either. But I do feel like in order for me to live, if I know that I can do this, uh, periodically and I could do it in a sense of moderation and I don't rely on doing it it's worth the risk being homeless and being HIV negative is very hard when you don't have a handicap or a disability or something for the New York City system to manipulate in your favor um, the thought of becoming positive has crossed my mind because it seems so easy to do that and just be get off the streets. It's the easy way out. And I've said this before, it's, it's so easy. Like, with the knowledge and the skill that I have, if I was to become positive, I'd be housed in three days. Even guys like me, right? Right, straight, right, or whatever. Someone don't have some place to live, like there's so many shit and all that. That's why they come here. When they come here, they get caught up in this life. There's, there's people give drugs, people take it to their house, and they pay for sex, like you said. So that's why they're homeless, so they, you know, they turn into this lifestyle and learn the things. It's money is also, like, I guarantee you come here broke and you always leave with money. There's no way you cannot leave with no money for me. The people that buy most they are business people. Wall Street people, people that have jobs, like, that are married. Yeah, my shit is You don't want to come in? Come in. I'm going to count to three. If you don't come right here, I'm going to come over there. One. Two. Hey, come here, man. Why? Who said I want to talk to you? I just said, come here. Maybe I want to look at you. I don't want to talk to you. You never seen that before? Come here. All right, you, you, you come together then with your friend. I see you got to confer. Come together. Come with your friend. What did he ask you to do? Um, phone on, all that. That's basically like, hey, it was good. I mean, they just draw people in. It's not like $500. It'd be like 150 or uh, whatever. It's just a, a, a whole bunch of people. They also just try to rear you in by asking you, like, if you want to do something with women. And then when you get there, they want, then they tell you, uh, nah, look, it's this. And then that's when you get, you know, fed up. Then they try to lower you down to see if you're thirsty for money. See how thirsty you are for me, so they can tell you, oh, here's $200, $150.
and send you on your way. Maybe you're supposed to get like 2,500, 3 Gs for some movie like that. They do, that's why they come out here. They, like I said, people are homeless and stuff. They come run into anything. When you can run into a guy like that, you, do, you hear this kind of 200, 500, 2,500. They running with it. <laughs> they running with it. Especially they ain't got nowhere to stay. Yeah, they running with it. And where are we tonight? Where are we talking? Christopher Street, of course. Christopher Street. Where I am. And what's, what do you do for work? Oh, baby, I'm a sex worker. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I do what I gotta do. Okay. Especially good. Oh, damn right. The best at milkshake. Oh, that good ass head. How long have you, like, is it, how long have you been coming to Christopher Street for work? Oh, wow. Years. Years. Since I was young. You know, when I first started out as a boy. You know, I play now. I'm a girl, so What's it like being a teenage trans girl on Christopher Street? Oh, wow, it's hard. That kind of was hard. But now it's just like, hey, everybody's doing it. So. What's up, man? We was doing. I'm like, I'm just walking, and he like, oh, what you was doing tonight? I'm like chilling, and he was like, oh. Well, first off, I'm gonna ask you, are you, are you a guy? And I was like, yeah. What I should have said was, no, I'm not a guy. I'm a transgender woman. No, even though I don't take hormones or anything like that. But he, I was like, yeah. And he looked at me like, bitch, uh, he was over me. He was like, get the f out of here. He was like, nah, never mind, get the f out of here. Get the f more like it. And I was like, he was just going, he, like, he just started black and like going up like, nah, you gonna get beat up. Like, get, get the f away from me, you gonna get beat up. You stop beating me, baby. Okay? I didn't have to stop you. I, I didn't have to. And he's just, he was just over me. Like, get the f away from me, that I for you get beat up. All this night. Yeah. So I just walked away like a white woman. Like, I did like this. Walked away. All his friends was laughing. And I just walked away like In the club, feeling fine, looking like Love Star 69. Okay, girl, girl, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I look like right now in person. But I still don't care. What's missing? Why do you feel like you look because that? Because I look like a. Me too, another 10, but I don't care. Because usually I look hot. Now I just look like, like, okay, and she has a, a hole, and she's not fast, she's a little bit. Like, I don't look like that, but she's untouchable, and she's less tough. But you know, I look so bad. There she is. Hey, girl. And we was walking across the the, um, the highway. It dude was walking ahead. I guess he. F up. I don't know. Anyway, so me and her was talking. I love your voice, and I'm like, I'm not talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so he walked ahead. He started. Me and him start arguing, and then. He walked ahead and then we got in the team. Turn right, punched me in my face. And so I swung back on him and he ran. And in the midst of, you know what I'm saying? Me covering my. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Because my sister, baby, shot Sunday. I was trying to make all this money. Well, I could try. I tried to, but this guy, he wanted to see my eye. He was like, you know, because he wanted to buy it. 
Can I ask you a question? Why do you have sex for money? Because I need to eat. It's true. I need to eat. And I, I need, I have habits, I have to support. And I was working for the white man for six years. I don't, yeah. I'd rather juice white men for their money instead of get out of them in a half an hour what I can get out of them in two weeks on a paycheck. Then, you know, mm. it is what it is. Is it okay for you and moving on with your life, or even for me, to want to settle for $20, $30, and yet you're putting your body, your, your, your throne, at risk of contracting anything. I would put myself at risk of having sex with you for $600 now, <laughs> knowing that you're gonna give me that $600, knowing that I need it at that time. But how long, how many times is it gonna take me to settle for that before I realize that this is not what I want? How many times is it gonna take me to settle for that until I contract something so significant that I have to hit this drastic life change do you feel? Do you feel that such a date is inevitable? Yes, it's clear. Why? Because, I mean, in, in that role of work, I'm going into, the, in, into another person's presence with the mindset of gaining a financial benefit. So, he's a stranger to me. He, she, you understand, is a stranger to me. I have no, I've never seen this individual, so I, just like he doesn't know if finances is all I want, I don't know if a or maybe sex is all he wants. You understand? This is the dog eat dog world we live in, in a certain circumstances. But if I know that I can put my footwork in into not going into somebody's car, but to go into a job and wait two weeks and get a check that I can clearly walk to the walk to the bank and feel proud of. Mm -hmm. And being able to say I work for this without putting myself at risk. And at the same time, you know, meeting other people, helping other people, doing something more productive with my time, I would definitely feel me as a person, I would feel comfortable with doing that for the rest of my life.
The moment you told me the first time that you couldn't do it, the moment I even like the two hundred dollar number, I would have simply just said no. Your shoes cost more than what you give me, and you act like you give me something I'm supposed to just. Okay. That's I'm not putting power over you. That's what I'm saying. when I put the pressure on Crystal to having to do something that she really don't feel comfortable to do. But like helping me with the hormone process. I feel like one time she helped me or whatever, and because I'm just thinking like I didn't know her that much, I thought she was so shady, I swear. I thought she put chicken grease in the hormone. We're getting the word out about local businesses that are opening their doors after Hurricane Sandy. Small business owners. Like because you know like this was so new to me and it was like I was feeling things. <laughs> You know, I was going through it. <laughs> I was smiling one minute and cursing you out so bad the next minute, crying just because the sky was gray and I thought it was sunny outside. Oh Y'all would catch me on the day that my hands look ridiculously bad. That, that's that's New York City bed bugs for you. Are you serious? Yes, that's where that came from. These are bed bug bites? Yes. How do you have a kid? How do you have a kid? I mean... How does Crystal Vixen have a kid? <laughs> well, you have to birth a love for somebody. Or you're birthing a new relationship. You're birthing a new emotion for somebody. My nail shape looks so nice for now. Yeah, I thought you was gonna get a pillow, but then I forgot you when it was natural bills, you know. I, I, I knew not to expect too much. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah natural, natural now. Natural. Natural. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a friend. Mom. 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 And, you know, like, to know that my birth mother didn't hold on to me, but I got somebody who says, you know what, I'm going to step in and take that title and give you the best I can hold you in. You know, regardless whether it's through medication or it's through money, you know, even just me denying you, not going somewhere, making you realize that you got to do certain things on your own. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and even though it may come off and I'm running my mouth because I just don't like being alone. You know, like, I mean, it might sound like, oh, I'm trying to sound fat, but I know just, like, as well as they know, being pretty and cutting is something scary. You could deny it. You could make it seem otherwise it's fat, but it's scary. Why? For me, I feel like it's scary because when you pretty and you quote-unquote cut and real, you're not going to go through with the girl who they walk down the block and they say, oh, shit, that's a man. You're not going to go through when they say, oh, everybody in the store is staring and they say, yo, I think that's a dude. You know what I'm trying to say? Suppose so when you walk in, you get the utmost respect if it's not through your biological family with their own problems. You know, people identify you and respect you as a female that you are, that you identify as and present and live your life to be. You know, like, I had that kind of heart. Like, even recently, they can tell that I'm facing it, you know, with Crystal, like, with my family acceptance. But never did I ever hear Crystal ever disrespect me and they call me by my given birth name. Where we at, Liberation and Truth Unity Fellowship Church in North New Jersey. It's my church that I was born and raised in. Um, my foster mother and foster siblings will be there. And I'm actually going to enjoy myself. I really love the church. And the young group is off the hook. It's like the village in the church form. I 
I was never told the story of how I was brought into my foster mother's life and adopted. All I know is that, like where I began, she had custody of me at 15 months. And that's all I know. Have you ever... I never even posed a question, no. Clearly, your foster mother is your main mother, right? right. She's who you know to be a mother. Absolutely. And we know that coming out mm -hmm. was a life path changing right. experience. It went from just this to pew, pew, then off of this one. Pew, 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 pew. Right. Mad roads just bloomed. I'm asking you to do is just see me. That's it. I'll like I, I, I mean, even even ma, even even if even if the whole time I will freaking put my scarf on my face the whole time, just to see you. Because like honestly, what you're asking for, like I told you, is not in my wardrobe anymore. Just for you, there's things I can't hide, Ma. <laughs> like, these are things that I told you when I started. It's not like I can just go change clothes anymore and come you like you want. You it won't fit the same way. I said, Ma, my face and everything, it won't be the same, Ma. If I was going to get, I would just look like one of these, uh, Obviously, uh, honestly, I would look like more of what you don't want me to look like, in a sense. Because I would just look like one of these hard <laughs> that walks down the street that you see all the time. Okay. So you want me to go out, so you don't want me to look like a girl, but you want me to look like a This is not a girl. Uh, very well, Ma. 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 Grass or buildings, it's all just snow. Crystal is my. Can I say my nephew? Yeah, you can. Okay, Crystal is my nephew. Okay, I call her twin because uh, I don't know her as Krista. I don't know him as Krista. Mm -hmm. This is my nephew. Mm -hmm. No mother wants to sit back and say, well, my child, I gave birth to a son, and now he wants to become a woman. No, I mean, let's keep it real, you know? And knowing how, how she, what she believes in, knowing as far as um, she loves her son, she loves him dearly. Does she agree with his lifestyle? No. You can live your life. What's wrong with taking this lifestyle and setting it outside your mother's door so that you can go in here and love on her? What did you say to that? I said, I'm tired of doing that. It's no different when my other brother passed away who was gay and he had HIV. And when he, before he passed, same way I told my siblings then. Y'all have to put this aside. Mm. Judging him because of his lifestyle, you've got to draw him in because he's not gonna be around. Give him his, you know, give him his roses now while he yet live. Mm. Love on him anyway. That's no different. Love on my nephew. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so come to a meeting of the mind. Even it's a thing where getting together and and would you know as far as if I had to go talk to my sister because if I can't get this in the bud and and I have compassion for what he's going through, I'm that one that'll go and get her the bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I have to do. That's why he loves me so. <laughs> 
Do you believe that Crystal will be able to make it into righteousness in this form that she's in? Um, when he stands before the Lord, he's going to be standing before the Lord as a man. Where do you find yourself in the Bible? Where do you find salvation in the Bible as a trans woman? As a trans, I'm a woman of trans experience. You're gonna chill right there, look at your lips. You ain't put no Vaseline on your lips, huh? Mommy put grease on your face? Now this is Brooklyn. Oh, I got it better. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh, see? And you got some big soft wheels. You ain't gotta worry about nothing wrong with that. Hey, did you know this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My name is Casper, Tashim Thorne, Tyreek Jones. That's on Facebook. Uh, you can call me either one. Doesn't matter. Um, some people call me Josh. Most people call me Casper. I was born in, in Harlem, St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. Back then, it was St. Luke's Women's Hospital. Then I grew up in, here it goes, Queens, Rockland County, and Brooklyn. Queens was like, until I was like eight, nine years old. Rockland County, I was. 13 and a half, then I went to Brooklyn, and here we are now. For the few years that I lived with my mom, from 13 and a half to like 18, 19, she taught me a lifetime. And it's hard to fit a lifetime in five, six years. It's really hard. And that's what I love about her. She's been through so much. She can teach me three years of stuff in five minutes. She's, she's highly intelligent. We sit there, we read about the Bible. She's a Jehovah's Witness. The suffering and all that came from day one. Once, once Adam and Eve disregarded God's words, it was just up and down from there. But she still loves us. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool, though. It's pretty cool. Life is good. Just to be here standing, breathing fresh air, it's great, but sometimes I don't think it's greater than actually being dead. When you're dead, you ain't got to worry about the stress. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about nothing. You're in a better place. You ain't got to worry, oh, my hands are cold. Oh, my gosh. Oh, why does girl bother me? You ain't got to worry about none of that. That's why when people die, I tell them, yo, it's, it's all right. It's going to be okay. We're going to all meet up again one day. And right now, they ain't got to worry about the drama that, we, that we're dealing with. Did you teach Shamani how to skateboard? Actually, he learned on his own. And uh, I just found out last year. Um, and he is. When I inform my family about my, my sexuality, me being bisexual, they do not like that at all. Like, my aunt, she, like, the one thing she said, I wanted to laugh. She was like, you like it? I love it. Ah, and I'm like, I wanted to laugh at it. But you don't know that. I'm not taking a I'm giving a So I, when I trying to explain that, it was just ridiculously crazy. Then I almost got to a fight with my uncle. Like, he did 15 years up north. And he's like, like, five, six almost 300 pounds, like 13% body fat. That's pretty solid. And he's like, I'm, I, oh, I want to beat you up right now. I'll kick you down the stairs. And I'm just looking at him like, dude, I can understand his pain because he just lost his son. The, uh, like two days before Thanksgiving. I was, I was furious. But I understood his pain and that's what stopped me from actually from him threatening me and me swinging on him, because usually somebody threatened me that and this close to my face, I'm gonna swing. I feel my personal space is being invaded. I feel threatened, I'm gonna hurt you. But I felt this pain, and then on top of that, his family. I felt, I felt his pain, like, 
he, 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 he looks at me like his, like I'm his own son. He's been out of jail for like five years, six years maybe. And he's such a cool person. And I want to get back to where he is. Like, hey, what up, Uncle Sean? How you doing? I want to be able to go and just ring his bell just out of the blue. And just be like, what up, Uncle Sean? How you doing? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. The day I was adopted, I remember being in the courtroom and the judge asking me, you know, do you want Miss Irby to be your mother? And I looked at her and I said, yes. I said, yeah, because even at that point, the behaviors were building that I can remember. You know, I had some significant behavior problems back then, too. After that, we went to Burger King. And, you know, we celebrated, you know, any kid back then, Burger King was the so, and you got the toy and everything. She brought me a gift, and it was, you know, I went home, I think she had brought me a cake. It was just a big thing. Um, after that, that's when my behavior, behavior just went crazy. Like, I don't even, like, know how it started. It was just, like, it was a natural response. Like, after a while, it just became habit to, like, while out. It was just habit. School was actually the main place that triggered it a lot. You know, I was geeky. I was fat. I didn't have much. My basic attire came from Payless, Kmart, Children's Place. After a while, it got so bad where I was in RTFs, residential treatment facilities. I was in, um children's maximum lockdown facilities like in jersey i was in one called foundations behavioral health in doylestown pennsylvania um i was basically all through dress day pretty much at what age did this journey through the tri-state begin uh that you recall the youngest i can recall being in Alice was 10. I was in my own placement and pretty much grew up in my own placements. Like, literally grew up bouncing from program to program to program. Four years, two years, two years, three years, another four year program, two year program. By then, I was basically a grown ass man. Okay. <laughs> I got some for you. <laughs> See you later. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye. Corey, love you. Love you too. All right, Brandon, I'll be here next week. Next, um, Sunday. How you doing? How you doing? All right. Paradise. My love, Irby. <laughs> Wait, before you get back in, hey, hey, go to the see? Russia, there you go, Russia. Now we'll get you a house. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I will be here next week, definitely. All right. All right. I don't care what he does to his body. At the end of the day, he's a he. He can look like a sheep. He can have sex like a sheep. He can alter and have breasts like a she. But at the end of the day, he's a he. For me, I gave birth to a son. And that's what he is. He's my son. He's a nephew. I don't speak to him any different way than I would speak to any of my sons. It's not to disrespect him, but it's just the truth. You're my son. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it has nothing to do with respect. It has nothing to do with disrespecting him. It has to do with that's my son. And if, 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 I, if I give you the respect to make all the choices you want to make, you, be, you give me the respect of what you were, I gave birth to. I gave birth to my son. Out of the womb, when they said it's a boy. And I accept him. Yes, sir. Coming here today was a choice. 
wasn't an easy choice. But it was a choice. It was a choice that my love for you made disregard all the uncomfortabilities. Because just like any other given time, no matter how uncomfortable it was, I still love you. And that would never change. And knowing how strong my love is for you, if, and we've had these discussions, if it was possible to choose to not feel how I feel, I would never choose to go through or to have to hold back because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all my fear is gone because I know who holds my future and life is worth the living just because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. All of my fears are gone because I know my future and life is worth the living just because he lives
I wish you was here, bro. I love you. Always and forever, Casper. One love, man. One love, one heart, one soul. We coming this way. You got bogey. We're gonna all group up right there, and then we're just gonna march straight down to the pier. So I want to put his put his memorial either on that brick building and or right there, smack that in that little flower area on Christopher, right between Christopher and West Side Highway. <laughs> When I started coming out here, you know, I started to see Casper out here, and I, I started to have my deepest conversations with him from out here, you know what I mean? And it's just a place where, you know, you can be you. You can do what you feel are comfortable in doing. You can you can be a part of something that, you know, could give you the sense of acceptance that you ain't getting a full family home. You get from friends and peers and acquaintances out here. You know what I mean? And that's why we're doing this today. Because Casper was somebody who would have definitely done it for us. If it was one of us. Now, first and foremost, my name is Bashim Matheny. And for some of you who don't know, my name is Bam. But me and Jashim Thorn, aka Casper, before the door, as a lot of people know him, or out here at West Forth, this is my big brother. There was a time where when we were younger and his mom's had a, had a problem. Now, when his mom's there, sold all his clothes for drugs and kicked him out. Now, me, as a person, from him, and I have mad love for him, I let him stay with me. Now, he stayed with me for four years. He ate, slept, to the point where we shared the same clothes together. And realizing this happened, it, it hurts a lot for me, and as well for my side of the family, they hurt as well. So, I just want to say, yo, bro, I miss you, I love you. Casper was a friend. He was a brother. He was the life of the party. He was an individual that can bring a smile to your face in your worst hours. <clears throat> he was somebody that everybody enjoyed being around. He was a peaceful brother. He had a gift. He was an artist. He enjoyed music. He was a DJ. He drew beyond drawing. You understand? The way this brother has impacted my life, he told me always, keep it going. Never give up. You'll always do better if you know better, is what he told me. And I thank you for being here. Look at this little short guy. Look at this little short guy here. You look like daddy. <laughs> when Crystal, when was this? Like two, three years ago when I first found it? It was when I got out of jail when I first. And she was knocking on my door and I thought it was somebody else. And I came downstairs. And uh, I was like, what you want? Who is you here for? It's me, stupid. And I was like, oh, snap. So I opened the door. That's when I first seen Chris. I'm like, oh, man, 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. On my first time. At first, I didn't accept it. I was not with it. And then it was just like, she was still always there. And when I got locked up, she was always 
she visit, she rode with, she called and everything. So it's just like she can do all that while I'm locked up or whatever when a lot of people are skirted or whatever. It's just like I'm not gonna turn my back on her. So when I got out, we've been close like we was kids. Yeah, do you want me to change? Yes. This and it's all like this, classic. My older brother, this is you. I ain't bring them to my office like this that. This is you. I ain't bring them like that. <laughs> yes, she looks modest. It's cute. No, that's cute. It's just I a, can't wear that right now because I didn't bring that. In my my charger. We going on shopping spree. We getting you like that. Okay, well, you get it, I'll wear it. <laughs> we first found out, or well, she was like, he thinks he's gay. That was a, that conversation I remember. Terrence thinks he's gay. Me being big brother, all I think of, he's not gay. I just got to give him some sex. I give him a girl, he'll be okay. That was me. Cause I, like I said, I didn't want to believe it. Like, it's my little brother. We play football, we wrestle, we... He's not gay, he's too masculine acting to be feminine. So, my first concept was like, oh, I need to get him a girl. And like, that was the conversation I had with my mom on the phone. Right now, I'm at the point like, what now? Like, I can't expect a child from him. Like, so where do we go from here besides the fact that I love you unconditionally? I can continue to do that, but when are we going to, like, what about the different changes of life? Like, so when I say, like, I'm stuck, it's like, we was supposed, we talked about all having kids together, like, our kids growing up, playing sports together. Now, I know you did, you chose this lifestyle. I'm happy for you. You're happy. I'm happy. But it's like, what's new in our chapter of life, like? What if I told you Crystal had children? And I say, why the hell I ain't met them yet? Those are my nieces and nephews. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? What do you in see? In the now? next couple of years, alive, <laughs> doing well, maybe at a permanent profession, um, looking better, of course, not homeless or without. I would say that. Nah. <laughs> we're not, we're not kids no more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're the yeah, 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 you're the same. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you mess with her, you mess with us. You Sean is my bestie. He was the first person that I met when I started coming out to the village as a boy. Recently, he's been locked for you know, um, for some some altercation. Deshaun's next court day is on the 21st. I'm gonna be there to show him my support because, like I said, he's a good person. He had, you know, his intentions weren't completely selfish, even though, you know, it wasn't that serious. Would you describe Deshaun as a bully? Not at all. I just feel like Deshaun is a leader. He's a he's a strong person, and he is his own person, like, you know, he's just the way he is. And I love him. That's my best thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change him. I would I would just encourage him to 
to do the right thing, to um, pursue proper goals in life. in my life. <laughs> so, but am I happy in my marriage? Oh, yeah. Like, I, if anybody gets married, I would hope that it's not to be sadder. <laughs> what, what makes you, what makes you happy? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I'm like, happy that my marriage is everything I envisioned it to be. I would say. I'm happy that it's not less than what I expected it to be, but then I know my ass wouldn't accept less than what I set out for. So it's like both of us, we, we're both strong-headed, so if our arguments, it's usually out of love because we know what we vision for our relationship. It's normal. I step outside, I tell all the time, I say we walk with our heads up, you know what I mean? We're, we're normal people. You know, we present ourselves as normal people. People respect us as normal people. You know, they don't want to attack us verbally or physically or try to challenge me because they feel like I look soft or whatever, judgmental or whatever they feel. You know what I mean? Because I don't think I look soft, you know what I mean?
We get off the pier when the gays say we get off the pier. That's when we get off the pier. They all homophobic, man. All of them. It's a shame. It's a shame. Too many beautiful ladies out here. Beautiful men. I want people to walk away after watching Pure Kids with the determination to do something to make it better themselves. I want people to understand that when they see a young person on the street, that, that person is in crisis. And rather than calling the cops on that person and potentially getting them killed, that you could actually go out and speak to that person and maybe find out something that they might need help with that you can help them with. America is a society that is defined by civil rights struggle. Who we are as a country is the story of how we've been able to incorporate more and more people into the meaning of democracy and representation. And the gay rights movement, I think, is one of the most successful civil rights movements in the history of the world. This movie is important because it reorients the focus of the gay rights movement behind those who've been left behind. Black trans women, black queer men, Latino people, people of color, poor people. There is no gay rights movement as long as 60% of America's homeless youth are LGBTQ. We need to do something about that. And I hope this film, by placing you in our shoes, inspires you to have as much rage as I do to turn into positive power and change. POV wants to hear your point of view. Visit our website where you can join the discussion about this program 
Get updates on characters and watch additional video. Inc